If you're posting your photography work on this platform, you're guaranteed to be seen by millions. What's up guys, Rose Production here and today my good friend 99films and I are going to be giving you guys a rundown on why we love posting our photography work onto Unsplash. Unsplash is a free to use, non-competitive, photography based community. By non-competitive I mean that you actually can't see how many likes other people have on their photos, you can't see how many likes you have on your own photos, and number of followers are not displayed on people's profiles. Now I think that we can all agree that our niche of being photographers or videographers is very, very competitive. But the number of likes on your photos and the amount of followers you have on your profile are not the driving factor of Unsplash kind of like how YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook is. Now I must say guys, Unsplash is by far the most addicting platform I've ever posted my work onto just because of the amount of exposure that it will give you as a creator and your brand. All right, so I've been posting to Unsplash for maybe about six to eight months now. Um, at first I didn't really post too consistently, but um, as the months went by, I started to post more and more content on there. I just honestly wanted a platform where I could showcase my photography work because I don't really consider myself like a professional photographer. I just like to capture things that are happening in the moment. Street photography is like by far one of my favorites to do for photography. I like to do fitness photography as well. I've posted some of the fitness models that I've shot in the past on my Unsplash page. The fact that I am not a professional photographer, like I focus 99% of my time on videos, but the fact that my photography page on Unsplash has a total of 44 million views and counting and almost 200,000 combined downloads on all of my photos on my profile, this is no doubt in my mind the best way to get exposure on your photography work. A super quick example actually of what type of exposure you could be looking at with like kind of a best case scenario. On my second Unsplash channel, Subtle Cinematics, Kyle actually took a photo while he was in Hawaii. It was either Kyle or Matt, but either way, they took a photo in Hawaii of a small wave just hitting the beach and they edited it up and they posted on Unsplash and Unsplash actually ended up using that photo as their cover photo on their website on Unsplash's homepage website. That was the first thing you see as the background as like the cover photo. And I believe it ended up getting about like one to two million views per day and it was up there for a few days but right now it sits at about i think six or seven million views and if you guys don't believe me i'll leave a picture right here of that photo and the analytics behind it it just has thousands of downloads and millions upon millions of views sure the exposure within the unsplash community is huge however i've honestly gotten probably a solid 200 to 400 organic instagram followers through my unsplash because Unsplash actually lets you tag your website and your Instagram handle in the bio of your um, profile. Now, a quick disclaimer before we get into this here, when you post your photography work onto Unsplash, you are giving people full rights to use your photos. So if somebody else wants to download one of your photos and re-edit themselves or add different effects or like things inside of the photo and just totally manipulate it, they have full rights to do so. It could end up on a billboard in downtown Los Angeles, huge massive bill billboard, your work, and you won't get paid a cent for it. So keep that in mind that you are giving people full rights, but you're giving up the rights for the exposure. For someone like me who isn't really a professional at photography, I'll take the exposure all day long because I don't focus on photography. But if it's a platform for me to post my photography work onto, then you know, give or hell, I'm totally down for it. Now another really quick disclaimer here as well, if you are posting photos of people or maybe on people's property, I highly suggest that you actually get the um, the okay from your clients. So as you can see here, I've actually posted a few fitness clients before on my Unsplash and I have ran this by the clients before posting these photos onto Unsplash. I just wanted in written form to make sure that they were 100% okay with me posting the photos. How I kind of word things to them too, if I do want to post any people onto this page, I just say it's free exposure for them. I'll toss their Instagram handle in the, in the description of the Unsplash photo that I post and I'll try to direct as much traffic as I can. And your photo can get viewed from anywhere from like 10,000 views upwards to millions. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is 99films or Dyson. Uh, we're doing a collab today with Anastas or Visuals by Royal Z and what we're going to go over is Unsplash. What's amazing about Unsplash is the fact that if you can get your photo onto an editorial page, you are guaranteed pretty much 40 to 200,000 views within at least 24 hours. The best part about Unsplash is that they really care about their community and that they actually care about their creators. They actually have a Slack workspace that people can join and with that Slack workspace, you can post some photos, you can get some criticism back. As creatives, it's amazing because they put it in together into a group 
where you can talk to any other photographers around the world about your work and their own work. It's great for getting new advice, for seeing inspiration, and even just reaching out to new people that you know you might not have otherwise found. Okay, so let's talk about if money is in the picture of posting onto Unsplash. So here's a quick story time. So I posted a photo on my Unsplash. It was a fitness photo. So a marketing company from New York actually reached out to me and they said that they had a client that was a real estate client who was opening up a um, new office space in Washington DC and they asked if they could have the raw image that I captured of this photo and that they were willing to pay, pay a price for it. So I was pretty stoked about this because you know I was posting the photos there for free but somebody was actually asking for the raw file and was asking me to name my price for it. They said they've been charged around the $75 US range so that's what I charged them. I felt that you know it wasn't worth any more than that. So they paypal me the $75 US and I sent them the raw image of that photo that they were looking for. And that photo was apparently used as a placeholder on the side of the building where the construction was being um, done at, at this new real estate office. So I thought that was kind of cool that I actually got paid for just posting the photo content on there. I had no intentions of getting paid, but it was, you know, $75 that I never had. So what makes Unsplash unique is the fact that there's actual humans that are looking at your photos and not just AIs or bots. And so this keeps uh, Unsplash to a certain criteria. Sometimes they might not even accept your photos if they're too blurry or too grainy. If you have an amazing photo that makes it onto the editorial page, Unsplash will actually put your photo into a specific album that best fits the photo and niche. And so by doing that, it'll actually increase your views and downloads even more. So for me specifically, I like to post at Unsplash almost as much as I can or anytime I travel. That's a great time to get photos. I get lucky that a lot of the photos that I post end up on the editorial page. And so basically, since it's real people who are actually looking at my photos and not just AIs or bots, they liked it enough that they actually posted my New York City collection onto their Instagram page. And that post alone got three to 4,000 likes. What I love about that is that is three to 4,000 people that may not have ever seen my work or ever heard my name if it wasn't for Unsplash. And lastly, we're gonna talk about how to maximize your photos to its full potential so you can get as many views and downloads on your photos as possible. So when you post a photo onto Unsplash, you're gonna be asked for three things. You're gonna be asked for the location, so you're gonna to wanna to tag the location as to where the photo was taken. You're gonna be asked for a description. Um, I feel that this could help with SEO. I've never really done like any sort of test for this, but I feel that adding a solid description to your photos will definitely help maybe getting it onto the editorial feed when real humans are filtering through the photos being submitted onto Unsplash. And lastly, tagging, which in my opinion is the most important. In my opinion, if you have this checklist of three things, you will have a better chance at hitting the editorial feed. So let's say your photo doesn't hit the editorial feed and you don't get that initial boost of views and downloads on your photo. That's okay because we're gonna talk about tagging. So here's a couple photos that I snapped of my friend Adam at the gym. He had the tarp off and he was flexing in front of the mirror and I snapped a couple photos of him. Now when you post a photo on Unsplash and let's say it does hit the editorial feed, your photo on the back end when you're looking at it on your analytics, it will show a small yellow flag on the top right of the photo, top right or left. And this means that the photo was posted on the editorial feed. If you hover over that flag, it will show when it was posted on the editorial feed and featured on there. So look at these two photos. There is no flag on these photos. Therefore, it was not actually posted on the editorial feed. So you're probably wondering, how do these photos have almost a million views and thousands of downloads on them without even hitting the editorial feed? Now, this is why I talk about the power of tags on Unsplash. Now, one thing to keep in mind when tagging your photos on Unsplash is that your tags need to be very general. By this, I mean, if let's say I'm shooting in a gym setting, I'm gonna hashtag or I'm gonna tag gym, fitness, lifestyle, flexing, muscles, weightlifting, bodybuilding, powerlifting, male, male at the gym, guy lifting weights, guy at the gym, model, modeling, photography. This photo specifically, I was using the Canon 6D Mark II, so I tagged that. I tagged the lens I was using, the Canon 24 to 70, so on and so forth, you kind of get the picture. So be very general when you're doing a portrait photo, let's say it's a waterfall, tag waterfall, nature, nature photography, lifestyle, lifestyle photography, 
inspiration, wallpaper, iPhone background, phone background, desktop background, and also something to mention guys, every single one of my gym photos that I've posted on my Unsplash, I actually use my own custom fitness Lightroom preset pack, which I'm offering on my online store. I'll leave a link in description for that preset pack as well as in the comment section of this video. You should definitely check it out. Whole online store is 50% off. So definitely go check that out if you guys want a really simple and clean look on your fitness photos. Now keep in mind when you're taking a photo for Unsplash or if you're posting a specific photo to Unsplash that people are most likely gonna be using this for website placeholders. They're gonna be maybe using it for their websites. Um, you know, if they need a background image for their website, let's say they do need a nature photo for their background. Chances are they're gonna go onto Unsplash search and type nature and the first photo that they really like that pops up, they're gonna quickly click download. They have full rights to put that photo onto the background of their website. Now, when somebody likes one of your photos or follows you on Unsplash, or maybe even places one of your photos that you've taken into a album that they've curated, you're gonna get a notification on the top right of your browser and it's gonna show you who liked your photo, who followed you, and you'll also get a notification when somebody actually adds into an album that was actually curated by that person. So anybody can actually curate their own albums on Unsplash. And the more that your photos get placed into these photo albums that were curated by other Unsplash users, it will just help boost your views and your downloads as a whole. So I guess that kind of comes full circle to the non-competitiveness that Unsplash offers, which I honestly really like because it's such a stress-free platform. I just really love Unsplash. All right guys, so that's a wrap for 99 Films and I's take on Unsplash and why we love this platform so much. And leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys actually post to Unsplash or if you've ever tried it out. If you haven't tried it out, I'll leave a link in the description where you guys can check out the homepage, check out what it's all about, um, check the platform out and even sign up and post your own photography work onto it. And be sure to check out 99films on YouTube. He posts some uh, filmmaking tips and tricks videos as well as his other music video content and creative content on there. Super dope videographer. I've worked alongside him for years now and it's really dope to finally have a collab on my YouTube channel with him. And we're actually gonna be coming out with a collab video on his channel as well pretty soon. So definitely click the notification bell on his channel and be on the lookout for that video dropping very soon. And if you don't subscribe to my channel, consider doing so as I post a lot of filmmaking tips and tricks videos as well as very in-depth behind the scenes videos while I'm on my film sets. So with all that being said guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.